Yeah, so uh, I can speak. I'm, I've worked globally, and you see this a lot. I've worked a lot in Asia, and obviously a lot in in Europe and the UK. And we have these regulatory frameworks, um, you know, set by things like the Bank of England CBES framework, um, or the government GBES systems uh, GBES framework. And essentially, what that looks at is the types of common attacks that are, are occurring against these organisations. And the types of tactics and procedures that these attackers are actually using. And, you know, the purpose of red teaming is really to determine where that threshold of detection is. It's mm-hmm. great. I've been on red teams where people have been very open and said, we just want to see what you can do, whether you can get in and what you can get to. And those types yes. of engagements are great. Other people are like, these are the things that we're so concerned about. Mm-hmm. Um, certain things are in scope. And you you definitely get this a lot with regulatory um uh, processes frameworks where there are certain things you have to demonstrate access to and in some sense um s- some examples people actually want you to emulate the types of attacks that people are seeing for example maybe a, a you know historically uh, phishing kind of evolved into people using isos as an example so word documents were gone isos were much more difficult to detect they removed some of the metadata from the file that's an ex- a specific example of uh things that threat actors were using to gain access to environments and so mm-hmm. a customer would say well i'm specifically interested in whether we can detect those types of attacks as as an initial point of entry um ultimately it's up to us to determine the best possible approach but um You know, it is about finding out where that detection threshold is. And sometimes that kind of get in at all cost and, you know, get out, get in, get out before anybody sees you. They're good, but they provide um, minimal value to the customer if that that's happened very quickly and it's mm-hmm. quite easy to achieve. Because where do you start with that? Um, yeah. You know, if if you can achieve your objective. So what, what what we like to do is we focus on the initially achieving our objectives, and then um, we have conversations with the customer around. Okay, well, let's ramp up the noise a little bit. We haven't been seen. We haven't been detected. You know, essentially, it's mission accomplished. Um, let's find out what we can do to actually determine where that threshold is can we get caught I, I think it was Raphael Mudge the creator of Cobalt Strike I watched a video on his where he was very passionate about it should be hacking to get caught and the idea is yes. well, where is that and um, I, 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 that kind of really resonated with me um, yeah. as an approach because ultimately it's not it's not really about me it's about uh, kind of understanding where that threshold of detection is for a customer and I think that's why you know purple teaming has become yeah. uh, so much more popular because at least yep it's collaborative and you can kind of see where that that threshold actually is Um, yeah i think i think that's something that that never quite sat right with me when i would hear you know when i first started learning about uh, red teaming was that it it does have this sort of like you know a blue you know i got a blue ribbon at the you know at the at the uh you know the 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 farm competition for having the best you know know, having the best fence you know like no, no sheep can get through this or whatever but like yeah, but that's uh, not true, though, is it? Because yeah. in reality, like, um, th- there's always a route through. I mean, we're, right. we're, the problem with red teaming is it becomes very focused on an external entity trying to get access internally. Yeah. But really, the conversation should be, well, um, there's there's numerous routes that somebody can become embedded mm-hmm. in an organization. Go and get a job. And, 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 and now you're part of that. So, you know, the yep. threat model has to be keyed. Uh, and I think that's kind of where we as a, as a company place a lot of um, importance on that initial access vector you know should an attacker be successful then what and that's always a good place to start for the then what because that's essentially going to be the starting point for whatever good or bad will happen and so you know um sometimes we we de-chain and we start from that initial point of access other times customers or regulatory frameworks mandate that um you know phishing is a part of that but um i think you just have to be mindful of what you want to achieve um you know what the goals are of the overall because these are truncated timelines you know they're not yep. in, in definite timelines you know yeah. they're, they're not fully realistic of world real world because we're not criminals and so you know we're bound by scope and there's certain yeah. things that we can do and there's the certain things that we have to consider so um mm-hmm. so yeah i think that kind of intelligence piece is important in in terms of trying to identify the types of threats that you're emulating how about some free cybersecurity training resources for you and your team? Just go to infosecinstitute.com/free to get ebooks, training guides, and more than 100 cybersecurity training courses, 
all free for cyber work listeners. Go to infosecinstitute.com slash free and start learning crucial new skills today.